As spring flourishes, so too its most beautiful creations. Delicate, colorful flowers bring with them new life in old places. And look at this band of those yellow flowers. Okay, that's different. We haven't seen that yet. That's the yellow sunny bells. Roger McCoy with the Department of Environment and Conservation's Division of Natural Areas is leading a tour as part of the annual Cedar Glade Festival at Cedars of Lebanon State Park. This is the Glade Clef Phlox. It's got a good scientific name. First off, Phlox is the scientific name, Phlox. Okay. Uh, and then this one's called Bifida because of the split bifid petals. What we have here are thin soils and open areas in what's otherwise our eastern forests of North America. And as a result, we find plants in those openings on those thin soils that you don't find in the woods. Including a fuchsia-colored flower once thought erased from our world, but thriving today, the Tennessee purple cone flower. It's hard to imagine that not too many years ago, these hardy plants battled to survive man's traditional view of the cedar glades. We had parks people dumping on the glades. That's what you did with cedar glades. If you had some uh, motor oil and you didn't know where to take it, you dumped it on a glade. If you had trash and uh, you didn't have time to go to the dump, you dumped it on a glade. It's just, it was a big old rocky area. You couldn't grow other things on it. So, you know, use it. The flowers and the glades all but disappeared until one day someone came along who would change the course of natural history in our state. If it wasn't for Elsie, it would be a lot of glades lost. From her childhood exploring the meadows and woods of South Georgia, Elsie Quarterman harbored an undying dedication and love for the outdoors. She and her mother and a couple of other friends used to go walking in the woods to identify flowers. And she's always said that's where she first got her taste for all of the ecology and, and botanical studies. It was the beginning of a long and celebrated career which saw Elsie pursue her love with advanced degrees at Duke University. She actually got her start because in the war, in World War II, the men were all off in service somewhere and they needed people to teach and they found her and hired her to come teach because she was qualified and she could do the job. She did do the job, becoming the first woman to head a department at Vanderbilt and one of the first female ecologists in America, all the while enjoying time in the field with academic colleagues. They said every spring we take groups of people out to show them these places in the Cedar Glades where wonderful flowers occur in such profusion that it's just miraculous to see them. Feeding off the passion of others, Elsie saw a need to conserve the abused and neglected cedar glades, often spending hours on her stomach and knees, patiently counting the stems of some of the most remarkable plants in our state, many times with help from her students. One such trip resulted in the rediscovery of the Tennessee purple cone flower. But she just represented the best of the people who are involved and trying to preserve a species to prevent them from becoming extinct. That desire to preserve plants got Elsie involved in protecting unique habitats across the state, places like Radnor Lake. That was gonna be developed back in the 70s, but she raised money to help to preserve that. Her conservation efforts placed Elsie on the map nationally but it was her work pulling together influential and often competing sectors of society in Tennessee that made her success even more amazing. She had to get people in politics involved. She had to get people in universities involved. She had to get old ignorant rangers like me involved and see why we need to save this stuff from the ground up. Her abilities to go from scientific to preservation and ethical treatment of our natural features to social and, and political contributions to saving them, that's what's unique about Elsie. I mean, she, she had it all, not just one thing. From someone who didn't mind approaching and convincing the powerful, to someone who felt more at home in the spare dirt and skin-scraping stones of the cedar glades, Elsie Quarterman spent most of her 103 years changing our world as we know it preserving some of our least known, misunderstood, and abused areas for future generations to study and enjoy. You can imagine what that's like, knowing 
somebody who's, you know, a century old and still so vital and knew so many things. She remembered the plants and she could tell wonderful stories and, and could make connections about the science and her work. And that just was so inspiring to think that we all have that potential. Toward the end of her life, Elsie couldn't take as many field trips, so she enjoyed discovering her new life in her backyard, always sharing an enthusiasm that never waned over decades of discovery and accolades. She was not one to dwell on her legacy, but others have. The appreciation for the outdoors, the appreciation for the natural areas, the appreciation for trees and woods and plants, I have to say that's her legacy, the ability to get people to appreciate those things. Folks in like our department or other land conservation agencies are really standing on the shoulders of those great botanists and ecologists and other naturalists like Dr. Quarterman. Perhaps her most important legacy is for those of us who spend too much time inside. The general public needs to know what's around them. They need to be learning that there's a world that is not paved. There are lots of things that um, have life and function in the whole scheme of living people as well as plants and animals, and not just dogs that you've got on a leash, but animals that live out there and are part of the whole ecosystem. As we go along here, we'll see more. The phlox is a good nectaring plant, and they put that right out in the sun. As young and old enjoy the annual Cedar Glades Festival, now held in her memory, they experience firsthand the world Elsie Quarterman always loved. Today's Cedar Glades and the beautiful life they support are a testament to that lifetime of love, and we are all better for it. I'm Alan Griggs on the Wild Side.